to be seeing me in this double second guess except the world's a mess but man who wants to admit that Skating Polly. We as a group make Skating Polly. <laughs> Peyton, Peyton's my stepsister, so one of our parents got together and we were spending a lot of time together. I don't know, I think Peyton kind of maybe wanted to start a band with like people she went to high school with at first, but then I just badgered her enough to let her let me be in the band, and then it turned into like I was the only one who was like out of all of her friends that was actually gonna take being in a band seriously. And I wrote the first songs. I was like, she has the second she green green lit me being in the band. I was like, here's a song. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was easier for us to write our own songs and learn those than to, you know, learn someone else's songs. So the night that we formed Skating Polly was at a Halloween party. We had a bunch of people over, and Kelly had all her friends from her elementary school who were really into people Fifth graders. like Miley Cyrus and. And yeah, whoever else. We had this like little stage area set up in our house, and um, yeah, I, I think my dad like let my friends who liked Miley Cyrus play some of her music, um, and so I was like, oh, let's just play our own music, pay. And so me and Pay were just like just jamming and stuff, and people were like, what? I don't get this. <laughs> and so whenever people ask when we forward, we always say it that Halloween night at that Halloween party. Because after that, we were like, well, I guess we're a band now. <laughs> yeah. this place called the conservatory in Oklahoma City and I was like at that point I wanted to go to as many shows as I could so I would just go to the conservatory's website and pick a show and go to it and then yeah. I saw XE and I was like oh it's XE and from X well obviously we have to go to that and then we went and we just started talking to everyone and we were excited to meet Exe and obviously, but then all the other musicians too who the opening X. We didn't know remember it like we knew Exe. <laughs> and whenever Exe came in we started talking her ear off. Like we wouldn't shut up. We were just asking her questions. <clears throat> Did you know so and so? And I was about so -and -so like, majorly into the punk them. scene, like the seventies punk scene, so I was like asking her about the Ramones and the Sex Pistols and like, Did you know this and did you know that? And what were they like? And <clears throat> then we got my cell phone on, and it was this little Nokia block cell phone that, like, that. And uh, we showed her the recordings we made. And uh, I think it just came up that we were in a band, and then we were trying to kind of plan for her. She's like, this is cool, let me just give you my email. <laughs> um, and so that's what she did, and she always tells this story, and she's just like, it was the worst night of ever, and then these... Two little balls of light just came in and made everyone feel good. <laughs> you know, at that point we'd not really done much. We'd played some local shows and um, we'd sent her our first album that we recorded mostly at home. <laughs> and then she was like, I want to record your next record. And so we did. I was like, we practiced so much. We were like so nervous. We, we wanted to seem so professional. I, I remember the second we picked her up from the airport. I was just like talking her ear off with ideas because I wanted to seem like professional like I thought yeah. it out and she was like, all right, cool, that's awesome, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go to my hotel now. <laughs> how, how old were you at this point? At this point we had to be... I was 11. 
yeah, 11 and 17. I try to write things about different things, and I try not to write a, like two songs about the same thing. Um, a lot of times, I, I don't know if Kelly's the same, but I won't know what a song's about until like months after I've written it and finalized the lyrics, and then it'll hit me like, oh, I guess this is what I was feeling. Yeah, then. sometimes it's just a really subconscious thing, um, you know. Or sometimes I'll write a song thinking it's about one thing, and then later I'm like, oh, I think it was more personal <laughs> than that actually. Sometimes like we just practice other people's songs and stuff like that, but a lot of times the way we get better is just like trying something in the song that we're writing that we've never tried before. Yeah. I don't think we would want to keep making albums over and over that sounded the same. Yeah. And my goal with lyrics is generally to like, you know, be poetic without being too vague and then also, you know, be really honest without being too on the nose. I have songs <laughs> that range from like, like meeting my favorite musician ever to I'm working on right now about the White Sox. <laughs> so. no, we've, we've, I've never really considered it as part of the Riot Girl movement. When I was a little bit younger, I used to write Riot Girl on my knuckles because I thought that looked really cool and stuff. And I just really liked Bikini Kill a lot. I really, really, really liked Bikini Kill. And I liked the Riot Girl movement and I liked a lot of that stuff, but I never wanted to to call us Riot Girl, because, you know, it was the 90s, it was a different thing, and we weren't really part of that. We're, we're not trying to make music that sounds Riot Girl. Yeah, it was totally its own thing that happened at a specific time, and, I mean, it's not, it's just not here anymore, especially, like, with new bands. And Kathleen Hanna said she doesn't even want to revive it, so. Yeah. There are other girl bands that have also tried to, like, shed the Riot Girl, like, you know, moniker. <laughs> like Babes and Joyland, like, we were never Riot Girl, we were never Riot Girl, ever, <laughs> period. That's the end of the story. Um, and I get that. I, I, I get that now, too. I mean, L7, Babes and Toyland, Baruch Asal, I don't know that any of them wanted to be part of the Riot Girl thing, but they kind of just got lumped in because it was the 90s and they were girls. We have kind of a similar thing like that now with, you know, make, being girls and making music. We just get, like, you know, our top artists on Spotify sound nothing like us. Like, their subject matter is completely different, and like, you know, their guitar sounds are different, their drum sounds, there's really nothing alike other than the fact that they're girls and we're girls, yeah. and I guess someone could both call us, like, feminist rock, but our music's not all, like, girl power, girl power, it's like, yeah. here, I might have, like, a problem that I'm powering through, but I wouldn't call that girl power, I would just call that my problem, I think guys can, like, be inspired yeah. by that, too. Yeah, whenever people call us Riot Girl or whatever, I mean... It's it's fine, like, okay, yeah. but, I mean, we're not going to call ourselves that. We call ourselves ugly pop, and we're, you know, a different well, thing. Never be anything If God just stops us dream after dream We went on tour with Kate Nash. That was probably the first, like, really big tour we ever went yeah. on. And I'm the first tour where we like we're out for like three weeks almost yeah that was actually what kind of made me go from like I don't really want to talk about like girl power and stuff like that to like ah, why not you know like because <laughs> because Kate she she had these crowds of like you know pretty much mostly girls all girls kind of type of thing and she would give really inspiring cool like speeches about girls and music and just how we need to like blah 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 x y and z and it kind of got me more like yeah i guess i don't really need to shy away from that i'm not really embarrassed about being a feminist or something like that it's not something to be embarrassed about we went on tour with flesh eaters like kind of a west coast thing and that mm -hmm. is this old punk band that only put out like one album all together but the original lineup got back together so it was like christy john doe 
Um, DJ Bonebreak. DJ Bonebreak, Dave Alvin. I mean, it was insane. It was amazing. We got to watch yeah. them, you know, three nights in a row. Um, we did recently did a tour with Deerhoof. With Deerhoof, which was incredible. It was ten dates, I think. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite tours we've ever gone on. They're all so hilarious and fun to be around and great musicians. And yeah. We learned so much from them every single night. There was the Babes in Toyland tour over in the UK. Yeah. Which was Tell me about that. incredible. <laughs> whenever they sound checked, I like burst into tears. Whenever I met them all, I like burst into tears and then Lori kind of like started tearing up too. <laughs> um, I mean, we were also in a different country, so everything was kind of scary, but kind yeah. of just like, you know, that much more exciting. Um, Everyone was really nice to us, and I kept being told that it was because of our accents. <laughs> and usually that they're all just huge jerks, but I don't buy it. Yeah. Kelly dislocated her knee on the last night, like the third song in. Before it, Dave Grohl. Yeah, before Dave Grohl did, like two days, three days, a week. Yeah, before, like a know. week before. It was It was like really, it was kind of frustrating, because I dislocated my knee, and it, you know, that that's frustrating itself. And then I kept playing like a baller. And then Dave Grohl, a week later, did it, so then Broke all leg. of the publication says, while touring with Babes in Toyland, Kelly Mayo pulled a Dave Grohl. But you just compare the dates, it's not possible that she pulled a Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl pulled, pulled a Kelly, Kelly Mayo. I think he heard about it, you know? Yeah. I, I we were really told that <laughs> he was seen in the back of the room watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah.